So this is unboxing the new Casio Classwiz, new calculator for A-level maths. Got it in this nice box. Oh, got the same picture underneath. Uh, right, how do we get in? I expect the majority of this video is going to be, going to be struggling to open it. Oh, there we go. All right, we've got a box. There it is. Okay, so it's quite a thin box. Now I've got to struggle to get into this one. There we go. Got to fight this cell tape. Right. Okay. Wow. It's quite light. It's got quite a um, rough surface. So it's unlikely to slip out of your hand. Um, and I keep dropping my other one. So uh, um, I think a lot of the problems that we were looking at with the, um, with the design of this was the round buttons. But now I'm pressing them. It's not actually that bad. Um, try turning it on. Well, the, the back case bit is different. So it's like this clip on. Let's try it on the other side. Mm, it's a bit weird. I'm not sure if I like that. Okay, so. Um, right. First noticing is that I'm automatically trying to like figure out where the buttons are. So I've got into the home. I'll quickly do like something. Oh no. Now I've got into a mode. How do I get back? There we are. It's gonna take some getting used to where the buttons are. Um thankfully distributions stuff is all there. Okay. Let's try binomial. Okay, I mean, it probably works in very much the same way as um, it's, we're used to. Um, it's just buttons are in a slightly odd place. Um, first instinct is I'm not sure why the pi is above the 7. Um, but again, we'll probably get used to it. Um, yeah, new calculator. So hopefully I'll try and use this as much as possible. This is the FX991CW. New Casio Classwiz. So I picked up my new calculator this morning and I've been working with it in all of my classes today. So I've had four classes um, and I've tried to use it as much as I can. Uh, I've let students have a play around with it just to see what they think. Um, this is in no way meant to be a full review of the calculator and all of its capabilities. It's just going to be a, a few things that I've spotted um, differences with the previous model. Uh, if you want a full breakdown um, of what the calculator is like, um, go to the calculator guide on YouTube. Uh, he's really good at going into the detail of how the calculator works. So there's a couple of things I'm going to point out um, through my use of the ClassWiz today. Obviously, as I said, it's not a full in-depth review here. Um, let's just put the old Casio ClassWiz next to it, just so that we have a comparison. Um, the first thing I want to point out is the removal of the SD button and changing it to the format button. So. I am going from decimals to fractions a lot in A-level maths. We focus a lot on working with uh, improper fractions um, and working with those in our calculations. Now, if I type in 1 divided by 2 onto my calculator, then it automatically comes up with a half. And if I want to change it to a decimal, I just press the SD button. Okay. Now, on the new class wins, um, if I do the same thing, 1 divided by 2 and press the execute button, uh, I get the 1 half. Now, if I want to get the decimal equivalent to that, then I need to go to format, and then I need to choose which format I want. Now, I need to go, go down to decimal, press OK, and then I've got my decimal. Now, that feels 
like um, a lot of work when actually why doesn't the format button cycle through the options? That feels like it would be a better thing to do. So if I press the format button, it would go decimal, it would go into mixed number, um, and then cycle back around, because they're going to be the most useful things, right? So that's one thing. And to do with that, um, one of the things I was using today, because we were looking at um, the trapezium rule. And so for the trapezium rule, I quite like to get my students to use the table function on the class whiz. Now the table function on the class whiz, uh, just go to menu, and then I go down to number nine for table. And let's say I had, um, let's just go with one over x. So one over x in my function. I don't need a g of x. Start, uh, table range, start, end, and step. Let's just keep it as one to five with step of one. Press equals, and I've got my values. And uh, I can cycle through the values that I have. Okay, all perfectly fine, quite easy to use. So let's try and do the same thing on the new class whiz. So if I go to home and I go to table, press OK. Um, at the moment, what it's, it comes up with the table. It's got an f of x column and g of x column. It's currently saying f of x slash g of x none. Um, I didn't know what to do at this point, <coughs> to be honest. Um, so going in, uh, I wasn't too sure what I needed to press. The first thing I tried was f of x. Um, and that came up with f of x, g of x, define f of x, define g of x. OK, I went, right, well, this is how you do it then. So I define f of x, and uh, I go for 1 over x. So I'm going to need to find my fraction button. Um, 1 over x. You're probably shouting at the screen. Yep, try and do this on the side. Uh, so I've got my 1 over x, and I've got that up. So now I can start typing in some values. So 1. And you can see that uh, a value is coming up with f of x for 1, so 1 over 1. And then 2 is putting in 0 0.5. It's putting in errors at g of x because there's no g of x to find. And I was like, yeah, well, can I automatically come up with a table? So it took me a while to figure out that I can. There's these three buttons under tools. So I pressed on that. And then it said, right, table range. OK, I can go in and it comes up with the automatic thing that we are used to on the class with. Um, and I need to scroll down to execute to get that to work, press OK, and then I've got my values. And so this looks precisely the same as what the old class with displays. <clears throat> and you can turn off with the tool button, you can turn off the G of X, etc. So is this quicker? Not, I don't feel like it is. Um, it's not as intuitive. I'm not sure why um, I would really want to play around with that. Um, but maybe there is. Maybe there's some reason and option that I can't think of at the moment that it might be useful to do. Uh, but at the moment, it's not coming to me. Um, other things that I would point out um, on the new class with is that it has two up-down arrows. Um, if you haven't spotted this, it's got the left, right, up, down, and the OK here. And it's got this one here. So this one kind of like goes to the top and bottom of the list, um, which I guess is fine. I mean, I don't see why it takes so much longer to go up and down. Um, if I go to distribution, um, it's quite easy to sift through the distributions going up and down, but I can press this button and it'll go to the next screen down. Okay, or again to the end of the list. So I'm not quite sure what that's really good for. Um, maybe it's to help navigate the catalog. Again, I'm, I'm not too keen on that. So I'm not too keen on the format button. I'm not too keen on the fact there's two arrow buttons. Um, the placement of where things are seem odd in some cases. So uh, on the old class whiz, you have the natural log linked in with the E button, which seems appropriate. 
But now the natural log button is above the log base changing button, and E is above 8 for some reason. Um, I mean, I, I understand why you would. So on the old class wiz, you've got the root at the square root button and the cube root button on the same linkage with the shift button. Um, and now you've got square root and nth root. That seems to make sense. Um, but, you know, you had the option clearly of putting in things like a pi button. Uh, that would have been really, really useful, so that I didn't have to press shift and now 7. So pi is now above the 7, rather than, as it was, above the times 10 to the x button, right at the bottom. So, buttons have moved. Um, I think that there could have been some coloration here with these buttons to make these stand out a bit more, the navigation buttons, um, because there's a lot of bits there. Is it going to make my life easier and faster? I don't, I don't think so. Um, it's going to take me time to get used to it first. And I can't see how things are in neater places. So, you know, if I need to find the NCR button, the NCR button was here above the division symbol, which made that easy to use. If I want the NCR now, I need to go into... Uh, no, it's in the catalogue, isn't it? So it's in the catalog, and then I need to go to probability, and then I need to go to combination, and then I've got my NCR, so I choose two, for example. Okay, so things are now kind of buried in menus, and I know that's kind of getting closer to what the graphical calculator is, but I just don't immediately find this intuitive because I'm so used to this one. I'm sure I'll get better. I'm sure I'll come around to it. Um, but I feel like there's a couple of missed opportunities here. Um, the, I have found a new feature. So there's, there's a couple of new features on the class with. Um, so the first one that you may know of is this math box. Um, if I go to the math box, you can um, you can explore uh, rolling of dice and uh, tossing a coin. And I just want to show you the animation, because there's a bit of animation that goes with this. So with the dice roll, you can choose how many dice, how many attempts, and execute. And it has an animation of a dice rolling. Okay, lovely. Um, but... I just want to show you the one for the coin toss, because I, I found this quite amusing. If I go onto the coin toss, and the animation, the last bit of that animation has the coin flipping onto its edge. And you know how many times people ask, uh, say, oh, uh, what, what if the kind of coin is bias? Um, it's 50-50, it's and someone says... Um, oh, but it could land on its edge. Well, this animation pretty much shows that that's going to happen. So I go on to execute. There you are. It lands on its edge. So one in a million shot that that would happen. So I don't think that's particularly helpful. The one thing that I will point out that I did spot that was new um, was if I go into uh, the equation... Um, I, this is one bit I do like. I think the solver being here is really useful. So if I want to solve sine of x equals a half, for example, so sine and then x uh, equals, so uh, one half, and enter initial value. So this is a this is a better solver than what we have in here, because it's it was always a bit clunky, kind of like a secret feature of this class with when here it's clearly to be used. So if I put in 25, for example, and execute, it homes in on x being 30. Great. And that's that's much better, uh, it being there. I've got to say that's that's an improvement. Um, the polynomial solver. So if I go to cubic, now I hope this is going to work for me. I'm just going to make up a cubic on the go. So one, 
Uh, let's go minus three, five, and two. When I go to execute, so I get the three roots. And then it tells me, so I, unfortunately I didn't choose a good one there. Um, it says no local max min. So what it does is I'll see if I can, <laughs> see if I can force it. Um, let's try that one. Yeah, so here in this example, local maximum uh, minus 552, and then local minimum minus a third, 32 over 27. So it gives you the coordinates of the local minimums and maximums of a cubic. I couldn't get it to work for a cortic, um, but that was, that was a nice new feature that I quite liked. So there's a, there's a quick kind of run through of um, my pet peeves and um, some things that I like about the new calculator. Um, I think it's, it's more a little bit of disappointment. I think, you know, there were some things here that I thought were going to be, you know, that you could get, um, get right. Um, having a pie button would be really useful. Um, and some things have just moved around to weird places. I don't like the fallback button at all. I, I think that works in a really clunky way. But the solver uh, is really good. And there are some good elements. Uh, but this is the, let's get rid of this one now, bye bye. Uh, this is the one um, that we are now going to be working with uh, for A-level maths. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the Casio FX901CW.